Monsters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Tuesday, Tuesday the 26th of July, just about to wrap up the month of July and this candle right here, that monthly candle is going to be so important. All right, let's get to the story. I got so many stocks and things to look at. I'm not going to take too much time today in the overview, you know my overview. My overview is that we made a low Back on the 17th of June at 29,653 in the Dow, this is a, a very hard struggle to move to the upside, but upside it is. Uh, there's a, the, the weight of evidence suggests that there are more important stocks that are going up than important stocks going down at this particular point. Uh, that is in the Dow. There's, there's been a sector, I've talked about, I, I mean, I must have spoken about this since November, December of last year. All the economists are talking about, uh, all, all the uh, po politicians, everyone's talking about recession. Of course, there's been a recession. Are you telling me that the SMHs, the semiconductors, since the double top from November to January at 318, haven't been in a recession? Two quarters? Of, of negative action, give me a break. Two quarters, this is like uh, six quarters. Um, well, not quite, but at least at least three to four quarters. I, IYT, the IYT, the IYT is the transportation index. Are you telling me that since um, October, November of last year, at 281 in that whole area of the 280s, or sliding down to 205, that that whole area of the transportation index, whether it's airlines, whether it is truckers, uh, it doesn't matter. That's been a recession. It, to give a title, maybe tomorrow will be two quarters and that'll be an official recession, unless you, unless you change the rules, of course. And of course, the, 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 the politicians love to change the rules in the middle of the game. It's, you're playing uh, soccer or football, whatever it is, uh, and all of a sudden, the goalposts, a couple of people come out and they move the goalposts. That's the way it is. It's like you remember with kids who are playing and playing a game and then there's always one kid that says, Oh, oh, but and then they give they make up some rule. Um, that's the way it is. All I can say is, oh, 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 is that a bad news? Is that bad news? Let me just check. Why is that why I can't even see it? Nope, that's nothing for me. I'm gonna just get this off. You never know, right? All right. Um, if it was TFNN calling, I'd have to answer that right away. Um, it's not. So we're looking at the transportation. Just you go through any sector. Look at the RTH. This is the retail sector. The retail sector makes a high back at about 200. This is the Van Eck retail. 20% is Amazon. I've been talking about Amazon in a moment. And it slides down to the 140s. 200 to 140, 60 points. I mean, we're talking about something serious here. And now it's had a bit of a bounce, gone to a peak D. Why? Why is peak D important in the Chapman Wave methodology? Because your buy signal going to a buy mode implies in the Chapman Wave methodology that you should go to at least a fourth highest peak. And then that's an upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode. And then other things can happen. Well, peak D at 167, we're now trading at 160. That's a seven point decline. Little gap down today in the retail sector. I wonder why. Oh, why? Because it's Walmart, which is down, and not too bad. It's only down 11 at 120. I say only because from the news, you would have expected that it would be a catastrophe. It is a catastrophe, but it's a catastrophe. You saw that happen in Target, and Target did recover some. Uh, let me just go to that Target slide. There was a slide. Wow. From the 210s, it collapses down to the 160s. Uh, then it starts to bounce. It can't make the bounce. It drops to 138. And now it's had a little bit of a rebound. It's gone from the 138 to the 160s. It's trading right now at 150. So we might see the same thing in Walmart because, what? hey, they're not fools over at Walmart, right? They, they know that it's really important for them to get this right. So if you look at the weekly chart, slumping like this from this peak G in the weekly chart, 
in a rectangle formation. You can pop out of it, but if you come back, break the a long rectangle sideways move. If you take out the midpoint, you're going to test the lows. If you test the lows, in this case, 135, watch out because you can go straight through it, and it did that. Uh, and, and in fact, it went to the 117s back in May, and then it ran up and it ran up and ran up. It went to 133. I don't know what it was, 133.39? 133.39 on the 22nd of July. Well, lo and behold, we're at 120 right now. So it is a rotational recession. When the, finally the uh, Fed says, oh, we're in a recession officially, that's very often where you're starting to make, you've got internal lows. This is where you're starting to see some kind of a residual low. So putting it together, where are we? Look at the financials. XLF. XLF goes from the 41s, makes an all time high. Uh, no, sorry, I shouldn't say that because I need to check. Was that an all time high? Uh, right there. Click. Yes, all time high. And the big long legged doji candle at 41.70 back in January. And it's pulled back and made lower highs and lower lows every single month since then. And the most recent low of uh, 30 point, 30 point 37 and then it had an island reversal 30.37 on the 14th of um, July it has an island reversal pops up here's the 50 period exponential moving average at 33 and it's stuck at 32.80 but it is a sign to say that the re recession has been it has had hit every single sector. Are you telling me that Ford has not been in a recession since the Eiffel Tower high at 35.87 on the 14th of January? And it takes a dive down to 10.61 on the 5th of July. Are you telling me that getting cut by, what is that, 68%, something like that, um, is not a dive? And now it's bouncing. It's a 12.62 recession. So the whole talk about recession is, is ludicrous because we've been in a selective rotational uh, series of sector recessions. And that's, the title is going to be what makes it official. That's all. Okay, I'm done with that. Now let's just run these quickly. IND, this is the Dow. The Dow is down uh, 89 at 31,899, holding okay. We still remain long, long, long term. We're long from the 2020 low, uh, and we are still, and we've got new positions that are long. Uh, you're looking at the S&P, coming back a little bit from the low of the day. No, it's gone back down, down 26 to 39.39. Really struggling, and as I said before, when you consider the type of low that we made round about the 17th of June, this is just okay. This is not great, and I would I would hesitate to say that you could find anything to give you a clue in the monthly chart that says that we're going to make new highs in 2022 at this point. Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Questions and then about TMO, which is TMO Fisher Scientific Inc. Medical Equipment, just a great company. Uh, what basically what I said is acting very well. If it can touch the weekly chart, can just touch 580 just once. That's going to raise the base of support. And finally, I think you might even get the um, nine period moving average in the weekly chart to turn green. And that would be a big positive. I put that together with one that we used to have, Thermo Fisher we used to have. We took really good profits and then watched it come down. Uh, Agilent was technology, scientific solutions for labs and businesses. Also doing way, way better right now. A, B. C, yes, actually doing a lot better, but that one needs much more work. Thermo Fisher is a much better pattern. This is a 123. Thermo Fisher is up in the 500s. So, yeah, and now I said I'll get to Amazon. Look, Amazon, if you look at the structure of the arch formation in the monthly chart, having gone to a peak F double top, it hit on July. Oh, it's exactly a year ago. July of 2021, it hit 188.65. So far this year, it's hit the hundreds. This is, of course, split. And um, I should always type in what it was split at. I still have, I wonder if I can find it. I still, is that a gate? Uh, 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 uh. He should know. That's my son. Can you imagine my son calling me now? He should know better than to call during the show. Um, so, uh, yes, there it is. You see all these notations right here? We're at 34.88 November of 2008. That was the low. Um, and that was pre-split. And then it finally ran higher. Uh, so if that was 34 and, it's that, and, and today's low, it is... 1.73. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. How many of you have ever looked at your charts and you looked and you said, oh, my God, I could have bought Apple at $7 or something like that because it's split. <laughs> Look, you know, all these splits, I, I keep them here because the notation, the Chapman Wave, this is not automated. Every single letter that you see typed on my charts, thousands of charts, uh, is by me. And uh, it doesn't take very long, but it is time consuming. And when I shut down uh, accidentally without having saved, even if it's saved, 
there are moments when it comes back and gets onto another file, so I lose all the notation on the newest file from maybe three months ago, everything up until then, and I usually notate it. It's there somewhere, but I, I, I don't seem to be able to find it immediately, and then I'll start typing the new. So these are all splits. So let me go back to Amazon saying, okay, let's forget about the split, etc. But look, the arch formation. In the Chapman Wave methodology, uh, we're looking at, whoops, we're looking at certain patterns, three basic patterns. All the time I'm looking at these basic patterns. One is a straight line up or down. Two is a cup formation or a V-shaped formation. Three is an arch or an inverted U-shaped uh, formation and or inverted V uh, or a mix. One and three or one and two. This is one and three. And if you take out the left side, oh, the reason why it's red, if you come down sharply, then take out that at usually a peak A or a B and it fails, takes out the left side low, it can go a lot lower. We've had that a couple of times today. And on the upside, if you take out the left side high, it's green because if you take it out in the reverse Y, that can be very positive. And then in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always trying to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher peak, alphabetize A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's never an H. Uh, it's upgrading from a buy signal to a buy mode that should take you to at least a D. What do I mean by that? I mean that even in the Dow chart, let me just go here. This is a peak C. There it comes. This is a peak C. There should be in a buy mode because the MACD is strong. Stochastic's at 90%. I mean, that's fabulous. Uh, stochastic, uh, um, the nine period is over the 14 period moving average. This Dow should go to at least a D in the, um, in the daily chart. The, the 120 has already made a peak D and it's now consolidating. These notations, you see our Chapman Wave automated Resistance and support levels, 32,126 was a resistance level. We went fractionally higher, we went to 32,215. And you're on the support level, 31,795. And today's low is 31,826 so far. All right? So these, this is what we do. And you can see here, when it goes L, that means you've now had the 9 period moving over the 14 period moving average, and that's a very positive thing. When it went L, when it went S to the downside, that was negative, and look what happened. S, look what happened to the price. So it's very important for me. All right, let's get back to our story with Amazon. So Amazon has this big arch formation. It's stalled for three months now with support at 100 and 1.26, that's the low that was made three months ago. But if you're looking at the candles, this is the candle, uh, 81.30, back in March of 2020, before going to 188.65. This is, of course, uh, post-split numbers, not the pattern, pattern, everything else, the notation, everything else is exactly right. But when I looked, and I had been saying for months, I've been saying since, since December, actually even November, I said, Amazon is going to take a breather, and it's going to be quite sharp, and it's going to be unexpected in the sense that it's going to be kind of gentle. There's not going to be one huge move. There was one move three months ago or four months ago, but basically it's been kind of very quiet. And look at the difference between the high that was made back in right there, back in July of 2021 with a high of 188.65, goes sideways, makes a cup formation, has a retest uh, that was in November at 188.11. Is it not, I've been talking about this for, I, maybe I should do an article for Stocks and Commodities magazine, eh, too much time, um, about the double tops and the double bottoms, because we have seen so many stocks either within days, weeks, or even years, go back to within pennies sometimes of the previous high. 188.65 in July, pulls back to the 160, 150s, and then rallies up and stops dead 50 cents below that previous all-time the, the high, that previous high. And look, the MACD was failing, the stochastic was failing. On balance volume, that's the reason why I said be careful because we could go sideways and then start to drop with lower lows and lower highs. And even now, the on balance volume is holding very well. So here's the question. The question is, I have a friend. This is a question from the den. 
I have a friend who would like to, I have a friend in quotes, friend, uh, who would like to um, buy Amazon. Do you think it's worth buying it? Is that, was that the full question? Uh, let me get the exact question. TMO, I did that. Uh, there you are. Basil, a friend asked me, should she buy Amazon here? Well, once he says, should she, I'm going to believe you. Amazon here, what say you? Uh, they report on Thursday, thanks. So this is what I'm going to suggest. In the long term, Amazon is just an incredible, uh, what they've done. I mean, just think of this. I, I, yeah, I need six so these are little micro mice so that I, I like little micros. In other words, they a battery or, or connected. And they're not very expensive. I like well, and I order six or seven bucks and it gets shipped to me. What did it cost them? Did they have everything else? If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chaplin here. And uh, as a writing act, ever possible in an uptrend as a continuation pattern in your experience. Uh, yes, I can show you some examples. Good question. Let me just finish here because I want to. This is a. It's a really important question because Amazon, I, I'm not talking about morality or anything. You can talk morality to the end of time as a, as a game changer, as a leapfrog of every single thing that ever happened before. Jeff Bezos came in and he changed everything about the consumer. And as a result, in fact, while we were driving back from New York the other day, my wife was looking at an iPhone. She said, oh. So Amazon's now in healthcare. They 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 bought, they're buying a, uh, one of the healthcare companies. So um, they're in everything, and at some point it's going to be to the detriment, but not for a long time. You know how I always talk about 
automobile companies, the electric vehicles today are very much like the 1920s here in Massachusetts alone. We had dozens and dozens, maybe even a hundred or so automobile companies. And we're doing the exact same thing now. Things don't change in that regard when it comes to innovation. So at some point, Amazon, there'll be competition and then there'll be less competition. The same way with the, with the automobile companies, there were, there were dozens and dozens and then there were fewer and fewer. And then there were just the three major ones, Ford, General Motors and Chrysler. And whew, all of a sudden it became Ford and General Motors. And that's how it goes in any business. It's the same thing in the telecommunications, etc. So I think that Amazon so far is a leader. It's going to be remain a leader. So the question is, and the, I, I didn't get a, a context. In other words, if this person doesn't have Amazon, buying it here instead of up in the 180s, buying it in the 160s to start your position, I would say I have no qualms about a starter position here. But then you have to talk about months. And then in about two to three months, regardless of whether it's higher or lower, I would probably say you can now add another little bit. That's the way I would do it in the longer term. On a shorter term basis, to just sit here saying, you know, it could, earnings, look, it has to do with advertising. And like Google, there are a number of other factors that are involved. It's the outlook that they, they discuss. I, it, all I can say is if there wasn't earnings on Thursday and if it rallied between now and Thursday at this time during my show and was at 122, I would say having bought it right, started your position right here at 116, be prepared that it could drop to 108 and even go lower. But this was a starter position. I would much prefer to have a starter position here. And even if it drops and retests the whole 105 to 100 area, that is a 13 to 50 to even 70, even a 20% decline. But it's a starter position in, a, in really a, Amazon amazing. That's really what you have to say. Amazon, for months I've been saying, digestive, huge digestive phase is giving back all of 2020, just about all of 2020 gains, 2021 gains. Um, you can expect even more. But... In a longer term position, this is where I would say you could just start at 116. That's your starter position. If you were going to buy, say, uh, I'm just I'm making numbers up, 100, this is where you could start 15 or maybe even 20. But it's only a starter position. And this position has to have a very wide stop. And if there's good news on Thursday and it starts to move higher, that's great. That's not when you're going to jump in for your second position. You have to wait for some kind of the digestive phase is not done. I hope that helps you. And a lot of people ask me, so I'm answering that in, in the same way as I've answered to everyone else who's asked me about Amazon. Now, for those people who've had Amazon for a long time, I'm going to say treat it almost like Apple. Don't touch that core position. I would have a trading around it position, and that trading around it would be exactly what I was saying right now at 116.25 right now. Not ideal because the technicals, MACD's good, stochastics at 83%, on balance volume is pulled back. But I don't like this inverted V-shaped pattern, this deepness of this particular pattern says, uh-oh, it's got so much to, to, to do to get to the 126 level again. It's only 10 points, but unless there's really good earnings news. So for, if you're in that position, you know what to do. Here's the exact opposite. I would say to you, um, because there could be further decline, depending on where you got in, anywhere between this 125 and 116, I would probably have said lighten up a little bit and you can start to get back in on any sharp decline. Maybe at 116, I would say, hey, this is where you want to start nibbling back. Split the new starter position, not your core, as exactly what I'm saying. Split it up a little bit here and then wait many weeks, even, even maybe two months, and then see if you want to put any more in. I hope that helps you, but I'm talking about it as a company, and I'm talking about it as a company that this is so fundamentally, I'm trying to do some work here on, on this fundamentally. Purely technically, this automation says, nope, there should still be some testing between 110 and 100. So just be prepared for that. All right, let's get back to our story. So what was that? Uh, so the rising acts. So let me show you something here. So the rise. So there's a pattern in the trap wave methodology that looks like this. Prices run up 
and then they stall, and then it starts to make lower highs and much lower lows. And at a certain point, it finds some support, and if it takes out the upper declining line, this is the, the, the declining wedge formation, I call it falling axis, it looks like a long handle and the blade of the axe. Um, I'm not thinking Hitchcock or anything like that, I'm just thinking uh, the patterns. Um, and all of a sudden it breaks out, you can go all the way back to that previous high. But wait a minute, what happens if it's upside down? The exact, I even, I even turned the whole uh, chart upside down, the slide. It means it comes down, starts to make higher highs, much higher highs and higher lows, then it starts to find some resistance and it arches over and it breaks down. If it goes all the way to a peak C or D, it means that that pullback, if it takes out the trend line, upper trend line, it's probably going to either test or it won't even get to the left side low. If it's only a peak A and a B, be careful because it could arch all the way over. Now, where, what are examples? Well, example here is GDX, GDX, trading at... Um, Trading up 39 cents at 24.98. I've drawn this in many times. I wonder if I kept it because I want to clean up my charts at one point. But I also like to keep them as example. There it is. So here's the rising falling X formation at 30.64 the week of the 5th of May 2021. It goes up. It goes peak A, peak B, peak C with much higher lows. And then it hits peak C. The MACD is good, stochastic goes all the way to the uh, almost 86% level, but the on-balance volume gives you a sharp reversal, and then the price comes down, and it takes out that left side low. And what I'd said is, this sh should become an arch formation. I actually took that away because it was really looking messy, but I'll draw it in now just for demonstration purposes. Right there, an arch formation. And if it takes out... This, the support level, it should go all the way back down and go a little bit either just above 30.64 or just a, bit, a little bit lower and then try to rally again. Well, it did exactly that. So the question is, is a rising X ever possible in an uptrend as a continuation pattern? So the question is, can you have the same thing but it becomes a continuation pattern? It finds support and then not only does it go higher, but it goes much higher. I think that's the question. And the answer is, if we had one recently, oh my, and I wrote it down, but it's in my notebook, and it's just a mess. The answer is yes. If the falling axe takes, just briefly takes out the rising trend line, and then makes it turn around and gets back the body, especially one of the other hand, the body, and then says, you're making, oh, I think I know exactly what I'm doing here. Did you and G just do that? Oops. I'll be back in a moment. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstat has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, a couple of questions came in. Just uh, so if I could just touch on this, and I will. Look, there's a cup formation, a bowl formation. That's different to a cup because it's much deeper. It's like a deep dish pizza. I like thin crust, but this is a deep dish pizza. But we're looking at um, a trying. So at, at 3940, the ES Mini, if it's able to get to the 3443.45 level and hold there for five out of seven one minute bars, then the 39.48, 200 period moving average, which has been tremendous resistance for hours now, um, kicks in as a, as a magnet. Uh, talk about peak D, why is peak D important? Have a look at this. This is the 100, this is the 10 minute chart of the E-mini and made a beautiful peak G. I mentioned this as we were going out yesterday. Um, uh, was it yesterday? Uh, I, I, I don't want to talk out of turn, so I can't remember right now. But it made a peak G. No, it was uh, much later. Uh, during the evening, a peak G, and then it went to um, uh, one minute bar was uh, peak F, two minute bar was peak E, and the five, and ten minute bar at 7.40 last night was a uh, peak G, and then it pulls back really sharply, makes an arch formation at a peak C minus, comes back down, he has that cup formation, holds the left side low because the rule of thumb is that within two bars it's got to, sometimes three, it's got to get above the left side low. It did that uh, right there, right there, and then it started a rally. And it had a single move up, um, and that was at about, oh, it was a full crowd, okay, screams up, and then fails at the 39 in the 3970s, comes back down. This is uh, this morning, and now what we're looking at uh, it was oh that was all yesterday. Oh, God. I shouldn't have realized that. And look, uh, what I really wanted to show is look how long a rectangle formation can last. And then the rule of thumb is that if it suddenly spikes up and goes through a PD above that rectangle, be careful because if it comes back and goes halfway into the rectangle and takes that out as support, it could retest the low and there's a good chance that it'll break down below it. All of that happened right here. PD, PD, at the 200 period moving average in the 10 minute chart, fails and plummets down and now it's gone to a leg E, leg F, to the downside, down 31 in the E mini. These are just, I wanted to show live what we're looking at all the time. So now let's get back to our story. And the story is, I said I would look at that as a chance for the upside um, I thought I saw it. Uh, yes. So this is exactly what we'd be talking about. I, I took it out. I had it as as a, a potential some time ago. So uh, UNG, which is natural gas, back in the United, United States National Gas Fund, made a leg E spike back on the 2nd of Feb. Of 2222, I love that. 19.50. It gaps up and has an item reversal gap down. It pulls back to just uh, about the 1350s and then it starts to rally. 
And what I had done before, I, I actually took it out because it was getting a little messy and it was very much like, uh, look at this, you're going up and you're going like that. Normally I would do this. I remember now why I took it out because I normally go from the inside of the wedge to the upper levels. And that's really the chart that we were looking at. So this is it. So Dan in the den, this is what we're looking at. And he has a successful uh, chap. Oh, take that away. Remove. Remove. A successful rising inverted Chapman Way falling axe. So let's just make this blue just so that you can see it nicely. There's blue. There's blue. Look what happened. It went just underneath for one bar of the support level. And then all of a sudden it kicked in with a cup formation. Beautiful peak D turnaround for a cup formation. And in the Chapman Way methodology, this is a cup and ladle breakout. And it's gone all the way to P, G slash C, and now it's gone to the D, pull back, it's gone to E and an F, goes to 3277. So the answer to your question is that's exact, that's a successful inverted Chapman Wave falling axe that held support after a peak D above the left side low and then went higher. I hope that helps you. Um, let me just check to see. That's the rising axe. Good. But, oh, oh, but my question, the rising X upside down. From, they go to, yes, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'll share the chart for you by PM in a bit with a specific question. Okay, well, I hope I helped this. This is a C wave. It's an, it's an E wave. Okay, someone doing uh, a red wave. Fine, very nice. And then here's the example I'm looking at, symbol withheld for the moment. Okay, oh, I see what you're talking about. That's a great question. That, in fact, has a whole other bunch of connotations. I, I actually, in my mind, I'm, I'm picturing other charts that I've seen exactly like this. Um, but I just gave you the example. Exactly what you're talking about is what we're looking at here, except it wasn't holding from the high to make even higher falling axe formation. Mine had the flagpole pullback, and that's this is the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. Chapman Wave Eiffel Tower uh, reversal to the downside. And then it started the falling axe. That's on UNG. Almost went long the UNG this morning. Had a couple of things because it acted so well after my discussion yesterday. Instead, I chose a particular oil and gas energy company because it has the same characteristics but a little bit different chart pattern. And I'm thinking that crude oil at this particular point is so beaten down that it should start to find some support in the 90s and try a couple of times to get to the 103, 105 level. It might not do more than that, but that's one thing. And if you're looking at natural gas, a screamer, it went. Remember yesterday I said, I don't know if I can talk about this, but it looks to me like it's going to break to the upside. If it does that in leg C above the high of peak D on the 8th of June, at eight at nine six oh four, and it does this in leg C. That is incredible because it means that the weekly chart there is no H. It has to be a brand new A, and there's no other way I can count this. That was a peak D, and then there was potential for a chart wave instant restart. But to pull back this sharp, he says, nah, that was a peak D major top, serious top at the nine fifties, uh, and then it tumbles down. It goes to the five, whatever it is, in the continuous contract, uh, five, in the low fives. And now it's, I mean, today it hit 9.41. That's, that is really something. All right. So here we go. Um, got that, got that, got that. A question there. No, I don't see any questions. Now I'm not sure what's going on here. I don't want to do that. Okay, all right. So uh, let me just, I need to give a little overview one more time. I've been talking about, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, ENPH. Uh, so uh, George wants to know, I think I covered this. Where, good morning, Basil, welcome back. Regarding Amazon, where do you see a good entry point on the long term chart in order to start a position? So, I covered that. 
as saying, okay, I start a physician care. It's not ideal. Because I still see it. But, well, then up in the kitchen, I have some quick kind of flow. It says, Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Question came in about uh, Enphase Energy Inc. It's trading at 216. I'm not sure exactly. Just the chart was sent. Uh, second quarter earnings. Well, I like what it's doing here. The, in the daily chart, higher highs and higher lows, that's just the, that, you know, it's a simple definition of an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows. Uh, most importantly, the weekly chart is trying to fill in a huge decline from the 280 level uh, back in uh, the end of last year into, I guess, the beginning of January, maybe February, into the 118, 119 area. So that says to me, uh, and look, even here, yeah, it's got an A, B, Chapman wave overlapping wave says got to go to a D. It's gone to the D. It says should retest the uh, the previous high support. Yeah, it's acting very well. I what what would I do now? Um, I is a little doji candle as we speak down two forty six to two one six E N P H N phase energy. Um, I like it. It has the potential for a head and shoulders pattern in the monthly chart, but that's not the issue. The issue is it's gotten to a D in the weekly chart way below the previous peak. I think that was actually a peak A, B, C. Yes, the previous peak D. Um, and I don't like that. I like it to 
So I'm not negative on it. I just don't. I think it's kind of stuck. I think there are better better players. All right. This is going to be a wrap-up because we're about to go to the end of the show. So before I, anything else happens, let me do a couple of things. The VIX index, the volatility index, is trading at uh, 24.59. It is up $1.23, up 5%. Let's talk about the end of the day because we've still got the Fed talk tomorrow. So it's a with a down only down 112, but the S and P is down 33. That's a big number. I'm th I'm saying to you, there's a rotation going on even in intraday trading. So if the VIX index after 2:30 this afternoon is trading above 20, 24, above 26.10, this market is going to pull back into the close. But if it pulls back under 24, we can have a rally. I'll be back for the next.